It's 11 a.m. on Capitol Hill, where the first round of voting to nominate a new candidate for House Speaker is over. CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane is joining us now with more from Capitol Hill. I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm going back and forth with my metaphors. I talked about dominoes dropping, but now I can't get the song 99 Bottles of Beer <laughs> out of my head, right, if one of them happened to fall. Well, how many do we have left? I don't know, five contenders? Scott, tell us what's happened uh, in the first round. Now I've got that song in my head, too. <laughs> You've tainted all of us. Down to five contenders. This uh, process began with nine candidates. They're now down to five. With each ballot, the lowest vote getter falls off. And in the past two ballots, Pete Sessions of Texas has fallen off. And then Jack Bergman of Michigan has just fallen off. The leader so far is Tom Emmer of Minnesota, the House Republican whip. On the first ballot, CBS News confirmed he had 78 votes. Second ballot, there are reports he's now up to 90 votes. You need half of the Republican conference voting to win the nomination, and he's not quite there. He still needs dozens more. There's a momentum towards Tom Emmer, but this really is just part one of a two-part process. If he were to secure this nomination, he'd still have to go out on the House floor at some point, as early as today, and win 217 votes likely from only Republicans. And that is a Herculean task for anybody in this room, including those five remaining candidates. They may be able to come up with a nominee today, but whether they can put the full force and might of the House Republican Conference and its very narrow majority behind him is a much bigger question. And you can imagine all the conversations that are happening right now. A lot of uh, lawmakers scrambling behind the scenes after that first round. As we go into this next round, where do you imagine, where do we anticipate that session's votes will now go? There could be a coalition that forms among two of the five. You know, there are certainly members with like-minded policy initiatives and goals who may have you know, personal friendships. They may want to team up and share supporters in some way, shape, or form. And that's fine. Those are the types of things that happen in leadership battles. But eventually, everybody's going to have to coalesce behind somebody. If they can't get nearly the entire Republican conference behind whoever walks out of that room as the nominee, we will not have a speaker elected by Republicans anytime soon. Democrats remain with their candidate, Hakeem Jeffries. He's been their candidate ever since January. He gets 212 votes each time. The 217 remains the magical number. And as long as this goes on, the House remains paralyzed. They cannot legislate, cannot approve aid for Israel, mm -hmm. cannot approve aid for Ukraine, staring down the dagger of a November 17th deadline for a government shutdown. And time is getting shorter as this process gets longer. And so then what can we get, expect to happen in the next round of voting? I mean, what does it seem, what does it look like? Well, there's obviously momentum towards Tom Emmer, and he's got a plurality, which uh, in, in the world of Congress is an important term. It means things look most favorable for him, even though he doesn't have a clinching vote measure or vote margin. That all being said, this does seem like inside baseball to all of America, but for Republicans, <laughs> this is such a critical, pivotal thing. This could be their leader for a generation. This could be their leader for many years to come, and they're deciding it today in a closed door meeting. So they are going to be deliberate about this. They're not going to rush through this, even though several members have told me they are equal parts exhausted and frustrated and ready to move on. I can imagine. imagine yeah. and, and, you know, Scott, before we let you go, one thing that I think is of note here is when you talk about this being inside baseball, of course it is for the, the biggest position uh, on, on Capitol Hill for the House. But at the same time, we had mentioned that the eight candidates going into all of this this morning um, are not necessarily well-known politicians on Capitol Hill. They're barely known outside their congressional districts in some cases. So these are not national figures. That may cut for them. That may cut against them in this process. Some of the Republicans here have been looking for a change agent, somebody to come in and change the practices of Congress. And somebody who's an outsider, who's a backbencher, lesser known, may be able to walk in and make that case. But for now, the only member of the top Republican leadership who's in that room as a candidate is the early vote leader. Mm. So there's some things they've got to settle out before we're all done singing that 99 Bottles of Beer song. <laughs> Thanks to Anne-Marie. <laughs> I'm going to entertain. <laughs> Thank you very much.